a mystical ecstasy by francis quarles from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox .org by sonia a mystical ecstasy even like two little bank dividing brooks that wash the pebbles with their wanton streams and having ranged and searched a thousand nooks meet both at length in silver-breasted thames where in a greater current they conjoin so i my best beloved's am so he is mine even so we met and after long pursuit even so we joined we both became entire no need for either to renew a suit for i was flax and he was flames of fire our firm united souls did more than twine so i my best beloved's am so he is mine if all those glittering monarchs that command the servile quarters of this earthly ball should tender in exchange their shares of land i would not change my fortunes for them all their wealth is but a counter to my coin the world's but theirs but my beloved's mine the call by george herbert from the world's best poetry volume four the high life part one read for librivox dot org by leanne yao the call come my way my truth my life such a way as gives us breath such a truth as ends all strife such a life as killeth death come my light my feast my strength such a light as shows a feast such a feast as men's in length such a strength as makes his guest come my joy my love my heart such a joy as none can move such a love as none can part such a heart as joys in love hope from the pleasures of hope by thomas campbell from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Hope. Footnote. This poem was written when the author was but twenty-one years of age. Unfading hope, when life's last embers burn, when soul to soul and dust to dust return, heaven to thy charge resigns the awful hour, O oh, then thy kingdom comes, immortal power what though each spark of earth-born rapture fly the quivering lip pale cheek and closing eye bright to the soul thy seraph hands convey the morning dream of life's eternal day then then the triumph and the trance begin and all the phoenix spirit burns within daughter of faith awake arise illume the dread unknown the chaos of the tomb melt and dispel ye spectre doubts that roll cimmerian darkness o'er the parting soul fly like the moon-eyed herald of dismay chased on his night steed by the star of day the strife is o'er the pangs of nature close and life's last rapture triumphs o'er her woes hark as the spirit's eyes with eagle gaze the noon of heaven and dazzled by the blaze on heavenly winds that waft her to the sky float the sweet tones of star-born melody wild as that hallowed anthem sent to hail bethlehem shepherds in the lonely vale when jordan hushed his waves and midnight still watched on the holy towers of zion hill eternal hope when yonder spheres sublime pealed their first notes to sound the march of time thy joyous youth began but not to fade when all the sister planets have decayed when wrapped in fire the realms of ether glow and heaven's last thunder shakes the world below thou undismayed shalt o'er the ruin smile and light thy torch at nature's funeral pile a query by edmund whitehead howson from the world's best poetry volume four 
the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by sonia a query oh the wonder of our life pain and pleasure rest and strife mystery of mysteries set twixt two eternities lo the moments come and go even as sparks and vanish so flash from darkness into light quick as thought are quenched in night with an import grand and strange are they fraught in ceaseless change as they post away each one stands eternally alone the scene more fair than words can say i gaze upon and go my way i turn another glance to claim something is changed tis not the same the purple flush on yonder fell the tinkle of that kettle bell came and have never come before go and are gone for evermore our life is held as with a vice we cannot do the same thing twice once we may but not again only memories remain what if memories vanish too and the past be lost to view is it all for naught that i heard and saw and hurried by where are childhood's merry hours bright with sunshine crossed with showers are they dead and can they never come again to life for ever no tis false i surely trow though a while they vanish now every passion deed and thought was not born to come to naught will the past then come again rest and pleasure strife and pain all the heaven and all the hell ah we know not god can tell humility by james montgomery from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao humility the bird that soars on highest wing builds on the ground her lowly nest and she that doth most sweetly sing sings in the shade where all things rest in lark and nightingale we see what honour hath humility when mary chose the better part she meekly sat at jesus's feet and lydia's gently opened heart was made for god's own temple meet fairest and best adorned is she whose clothing is humility the saint that wears heaven's brightest crown in deepest adoration bends the weight of glory bows him down than most when most his soul ascends nearest to the throne itself must be the footstool of humility <laughs> 